A check on Netflix after earning shares are now down more than 4%, just about 4%. The call just wrapping up. Let's get some details from that call from Lightshed Partners, Rich Greenfield. Rich, um, why is the stock lower, you think? You have a bunch of investors who are essentially panicking, worrying that no longer disclosing subscriber numbers is uh, some, it basically speaks to the fact that subscriber growth is over. You know, this company has blown away expectations for subscriber growth over the last couple of quarters. I mean, two of the most two of their biggest quarters ever, excluding the pandemic. And I think people are just looking at next year saying, oh, they're not going to disclose subscriber numbers. That must signal a problem. It actually reminds me, Melissa, a few years ago when they stopped disclosing subscriber guidance and only basically guided to revenues. People worry that that was a sign of problems to come. I think it's just investors digesting how this company positions itself financially. And people like to worry. And look, this has been an, an incredible stock performance-wise for year to date. And I think this is just people being worried that this is a negative data point. I don't think it actually will be, but I think that's the near-term knee-jerk reaction. What do you make or what's your take of, 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 about the credit facility being increased to $3 billion from one? What do you think they do with that, if anything? Look, I think Netflix is in an incredibly strong financial position. I mean, you look at, um, you know, think about Paramount Plus, which has lost, you know, five, six billion dollars. Peacock, which has probably lost seven billion dollars. Disney, which has lost eight, nine billion dollars. Like the losses have piled up everywhere. Netflix is going to generate six billion dollars of positive free cash flow. For all. So for all the non-believers or the haters that this was never going to turn into a real business, this business is gushing cash. And while everyone else in the industry is pulling back, spending less, cutting their marketing spend, cutting their programming budget, I mean, you know, you can't even name a recent show on a Paramount so Plus. Why do like, they there's need just it? nothing. If, if they're spitting out cash, why do they need that? But just flexibility. I wouldn't read too much into it. I mean, look, not like is a big there acquisition the or anything like that? Mm. Uh, Netflix was making never acquisitions seen for a long time. And, who? You did froze. I, did you lose me? I'm sorry. For a moment. Sorry about that. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry, I, traveling. Um, look, there is, um, there's no need for an acquisition. I really don't think that there's an acquisition coming. That has never been the Netflix playbook. They have built this from scratch. Could there be some small um, interactive entertainment video game acquisitions of small studios? Always possible. I mean, they've bought small IP, Ronald Dahl. I mean, they have bought IP, small things. I'd be very surprised if there was a major acquisition for Netflix any time over the course of the next several years. Rich, when we talk about the password sharing, what inning do you think we're in in that? And is the next leg now the ad base, which clears the, the deck for them to raise prices? Look, the advertising business is still very early stage. Um, they've been pretty blunt, and I think Ted actually answered, uh, Greg actually answered my question on the call today, that they're still seeing overall advertising supply outstripping demand. You know, they're growing so fast. They probably have 13 million ad-supported subscribers, probably 10 million in the U.S. You know, a very healthy percentage of the U.S. business is now ad-supported. They're actually growing that the, the amount of available slots faster than they're actually growing the ad business. It's going to take time. It's not a long. It's actually a great problem to have. It's just basically bringing on more advertisers, getting people comfortable with what they're doing. That's where you're actually going to see ARPU really start to accelerate. And basically what they've told you is as advertising ARPU accelerates, it gives them more capacity to actually raise the price of the non-advertising. The ad-free product will go up in price. And so I think all of this is leading to having more pricing power over the course of the next few years. It takes time, but I think the ad product, you know, look at what's happening to linear TV. Mm -hmm. Less and less viewership, more and more cord cutting. All of this is showing the need to be on Netflix, Prime Video, all of these streaming platforms. Advertisers are dying to be there. Mm -hmm. That's a big opportunity. And I think part of removing the subscriber guidance is really a shift. The growth is gonna start to come from the revenue side. That's where they wanna focus people. Just, just to be clear, though, Rich, you mentioned accelerating ARPU, but we're not going to get that number anymore, right? Uh, well, they're going to give you subscribers on a infrequent basis. I don't know if that's every 50 million. Like, I don't know what okay. the metric's going to be. But clearly, the revenue growth, you know, people are still, we're still going to do the math. 
roughly right. estimating what subscribers are and what ARPU is. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. You just won't have all the pieces every quarter. 